This is Peter House many years ago. It was opened on February the 1st in 1955 by Fred Snell with an initial intake of 50 boys. At that stage, it was obviously not yet completed. With four masters and little space, classes were held in the Ellis House Toys Rooms. The next year saw further developments in the shape of Paget House and the Junior Hall. This was the scene in October 56. Compare this with October 76. Incidentally, both photos were taken from Monkey Hill. Sunrise and the new day's breaking through. The morning of another day without you. The sunrise over Monkey Hill. The lighting tower for an open air play, silhouetted by the early morning light. However, at this time of morning, school is still in bed. Peace reigns. The entire community is rudely awakened at six o'clock by five rising bells. Boys are soon in their toys rooms, ready for prep. This is a toys room where ten of us are expected to work. Decor, in all forms, is a welcome distraction. After roll call, boys bask in the sun outside the two halls, until the gong is run. Then there is breakfast to contend with. We return to our houses where beds are made, and general business is carried out. The sanatorium may be visited where a multi-purpose cure is to be found in the shape of two of these and two of those. The first major event of the day is the 15-minute chapel service which is compulsory. Slowly boys will drift in. The service begins and the singing is enhanced by the school choir and pipe organ. And then it's on to classes which begin at 10 past 8. On average there are 6 45 minute periods in a day. Fortunately at 20 past 10 there's a tea break. Sweet tea and sandwiches are served in each house. While relaxing, the paper may be read, discussed, or torn up. All too soon, it's back to work. The facilities for each department are comprehensive. However, not everyone uses them to their full advantage. An up-to-date library caters for almost all demands and provides a place to work. Classes end at 5 to 1. To the relief of all, luncheon is served. For nearly all, rest is compulsory. Only those doing music may be excused from it. During this time, we are supposed to sleep, read, or work in our toys. School is blissfully quiet. Perfect opportunity for us to take a glance around the estate. A view across the halls to the library. South from Monkey Hill, smokers are met with a panoramic view. A general view of Peter House from the south. As soon as one becomes a pupil at Peter House, one cannot help notice a vast assortment of children and dogs. Some say that it must be the air or the altitude.
For a small sector of the school, music is vital. Many hours are spent practicing a variety of instruments. The choir annually unites strength at Springvale, Zawi and Arundel for the Four Choirs Festival. Tuesday and Thursday afternoons and evenings are set aside for a wide variety of societies. Afternoon activities include science club, art club, natural history society, snake club, and many more apart from building sets and rehearsing for plays. However, most afternoons are spent playing sports. As in the academic sphere, Peterhouse offers excellent sporting facilities. Cricket, basketball, hockey, rugby, volleyball, a game played by over 700 million Chinese, Athletics, the flying leap, and tennis or squash, whether it be social or league. For the golden oldies who are less athletically inclined, judging and drinking tea are more suitable. One afternoon of labour a week is usually compulsory to keep the estate in trim, to provide wood, and prevent bushfires. In the evening, a tuck shop opens and provides soft sundowners and snacks before showers. Sensitive, just as I thought. Up to the sand for a second dose, in case the early morning one didn't work. This view across Founder's house may suggest illicit liquor brewing, but in fact those pipes are part of the only solar heating system in the school. To the bustle of the evening activities, the school is silhouetted by the evening sun. general view across the kitchen yard to Morven and the sand, where the lights are coming on. Roll call and supper and prep are next on the agenda. Work is soon forgotten and at eight o'clock the nightlife gets underway. The dramatic society over the years has become increasingly more popular and so flourished successes in both the Interschools Drama Contest and the Arts Festival. A scene from the 1974 K-Mutiny Court Martial. The excerpt from Rosencrantz and Guildenstern Are Dead won the 1976 Interschools Drama Contest. The occasional staff and outdoor play complement this very active society. 
Evening societies are well supported and range from orchestral concerts, lively debates, choral recitals, to bridge parties, and play reading groups. The Astronomical Society is keen on gazing at heavenly bodies. Not everyone goes out to societies, and a coffee social may be found virtually anywhere in the school. Soon, even these retire to bed. The night watchman switches off the lights, one by one. The last lights burning are those of the chapel. 